we're all young and confused. We're all young and very, very confused. And the secret to not being young and confused, like I am, I'm not really confused on what I need to do. I'm just stressed about what I need to do. <laughs> I, I'm not necessarily confused. I'm just, I know what I need to do. I'm completely, how do I say this? I, I have complete str conviction within what I need to do. I have a strong belief in what I need to do. However, I am, I understand completely what it means like to be young and confused. And I am stressed a lot of times at this. I do have my period before when I had COVID. It kind of just sat me about This is why so many people decided to change their lives after COVID. Because COVID makes you sit in your ass. Because it, is, it makes you feel like you're going to die. It's not, it's not the bad point where you need to lock up a country, in my opinion. But, you know, if old people get it, I understand. Because if, you, if you're if you an old person you feel like about to die, you're probably going to fucking die. But yeah, COVID. Uh, there's a lot of like, COVID was a fagazi. I don't particularly agree with that after getting it. So before I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. But after, I don't think it's completely true. To lock up an entire country over it is not, I don't think it's completely viable. Because, not necessarily because, uh, I'm not demeaning it in its, how do I say this, in its dangerous potential. I'm demeaning it in the sense that, I'm not, I'm not demeaning it at all. I'm, talking, I'm just saying that, well, you know, you shouldn't destroy people's livelihoods businesses and forms of income over some fucking common cold but i completely resonate with people that did have it and almost felt like they were dying it makes you sit in your ass i had hallucinations where i thought there was like a demon coming on my bed because i struggled to get up it was so hot and i couldn't really smell but i could taste i could taste i think i gained my smelling quickly though and it just, it came and went, it came and went. But I was sitting on my bed and I was shivering and I had a blanket around me and I was trying to eat rice porridge. And I was just looking down at my feet and I was just shivering and contemplating life. I thought it was a demon going to get to me. But I just casually walked it off and walked to my seat. And that demon was not necessarily a demon of, how do I say this, like a pure evil, a demon of my regrets. It's my own self in a demon, right? And those things are the trickiest to handle because it's all within the mind. But it was just me just reflecting back on my choices. Oh, I'm a college dropout. I, I always go back to this. I'm a college dropout. I'm a, I'm a fucking idiot. I gotta make this business work. It was like it was a mix of, how do I say this? Just being myself up. I'm a fucking idiot. Seventeen years of life. I keep going back to that. I'm seventeen years old and I think I'm a failure. I'm gonna make a separate video on that. I think it's a very, very important topic to think about because if you're young and you're confused, like which, which the majority of us are, and you think yourself as a failure because you're confused, you're just beating yourself up for no fucking reason. There is no ROI. There is no return on investment. And it'll be, you might get out of it like I did, where I just like, I don't give a fuck anymore. I just shit I need to do. I don't, I don't care. I got stuff to do. I got books to read. I got fucking, I got videos to edit. I got clips to make. I got this, that, 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 that right but if you're young and confused and you're constantly beating yourself up bro we're all young and confused we don't know what to fucking do here's my advice understand that you're going to die someday understand that family and relationships friends and family are some of the most important things in the world right money m money and fame and riches cannot buy them a bunch of people are fucking rich and lonely as shit all right, but if you and but you but you can be rich and with people around you, which is what I fucking I'm pushing I'm pushing for. A bunch of people tell me that oh one day you're gonna be rich. I see that you're gonna be rich, but you're gonna be lonely. Like what the fuck? I'm not gonna be lonely. I'm gonna provide my friends a job. The fuck? I'm gonna be around them constantly. I'm gonna have fun. My life is gonna be fun. If I was rich, I would spend all my life life with fun. And work would be fun because I'm rich and I have I actually have a positive ROI with it. I'm actually getting paid. Because if like if you. Most people, if you get good at something, you you probably enjoy it. If you get really proficient at something, you will probably enjoy it. Like sales, a bunch of people fucking hate sales. Probably because you can't sell. If you can sell like a bunch, you will probably enjoy the process of selling because you're actually getting tangible results. Results fuel motivation, but that initial motivation is is earned. All right, and that's why motivation isn't real because motivation is, is something that comes and goes. You need discipline to push through. If you're young, if you're young and confused, I, back to the three things. I want, I'm hearkening back to three things because I want you to understand. Lay off the fucking bullshit. Lay off the video games. Lay off the entertainment. Lay off all this bullshit because one day you're gonna die. 
All right, that's the first thing I want to understand. One day you're gonna die. One day everything is finite. Money is infinite. There's eight trillion goes through the mar uh, U.S. market every single day. How much through the world market? I don't know. I can Google it right now. No, I'm not gonna Google it. I'm not gonna touch my phone. Fuck that shit. <sighs> Money is infinite. There's too many people that are rich over what or the bullshit. You know, rich over bullshit products as well. Like. Like, don't li don't listen to bullshit people. Right? If you listen to mediocre people, it's, this, is the this is one of the most important things that I have written down ever. If I listen to the uh, uh, people, average people, if I was it again, if I listen to people that are average, no, if I take average advice from average people, won't I become average? That's by MJ DeMarco, by the way. He's a legendary author of The Millionaire Fast Lane, Unscripted, and The Great Rat Race Escape. Three amazing books. I'm reading the script at the moment. I'm in a great, 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 great rat race escape. That's a fucking. That is. <laughs> what was that quote again? Like Peter Piper pe pickled peppers. Some bullshit like that. Tongue twister. That's a tongue twister. Try saying that 25 times. You're going to die someday. And you're not living a life that's worth living. You're probably playing video games. You're probably doing some bullshit antics. Smoking weed, doing drugs, or something bullshit. I get my PC fan in the back. Dramatic pause. You're doing, probably doing some bullshit activities and you're expecting to know what to do with your life. You're not going to do what you, know what to do with your life. If you're playing video games and you're streaming, you're making clips and you're like you're seriously, seriously grinding, fine. Sure. Like, for example, and what I mean by this is like People call me extreme for it, but if you're doing an hour podcast or two hour podcast, let's say it's just an hour podcast, a short is a minute long. You can make a short 30 seconds long or 15 seconds long, right? But let's not think. If you get a minute, if you get an hour long podcast, you can get 60 one minute shorts out of that. They could be 60 bullshit one minute shorts. They could be 60 of the same shorts, but you edit it in a different way type thing but that's 60 shorts off the what off one podcast and all those shorts are as mar viral marketing in order to promote the one podcast and people will see you for the entire hour and completely understand your message you actually try to get your voice out there that's podcasting and this is why i love pod podcasting and talking so much because you can just shit out content and with youtube like the way to, to get noticed is to just shit out a bunch of content you like if you don't have any 600 800 a thousand videos high quality videos like you can't talk on YouTube. Like I told you, my YouTube channel. No, you didn't. You didn't post enough. That's a lie. It's a fagazi. Anyways, if you put that down to thirty seconds, that's one hundred and twenty clips. Obviously, you're gonna choose the best clips. Realistically, it'll be like thirty clips. But thirty clips of a one-hour podcast. Make them the highest quality clips as possible. Put them on TikTok. Put them on YouTube. Link back to the YouTube. YouTube where you're making money. Make some merch. Sell the merch to the people. Come on. Come on. Come on, interview. Slowly start interviewing. Start talking about trending topics. Try to get someone on as well to talk to discuss trending topics. If they're coming on with you, that can make that could be a th bro. You can have your opinion as a, and then you can have their opinion, and then you could have gameplay at the bottom or some shit, or you could have like um text, and then you could have uh thing extra videos and images, which is like just make the video more interesting. Put that as a short, put that as a TikTok. Promote, 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 promote. Create, 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 create. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. That's why I'm doing my podcast. Well, I, within six months, you'll probably see me pop up somewhere with my podcast. And I'll probably... you probably see me. So see my ass somewhere. I might be a one-hit wonder. Fine. I'm worried that I might. Like, with my other Berserker YouTube channel, I might be a one-hit wonder. I'm worried that I might become like that, but... Fine. So be it. If you're young and confused... Fine. Oh, I'm hiccuping. This is how you beat hiccups, by the way. You get water. Always drink water, by the way. Wait, that doesn't be hiccuping. Basically, you drink the water, right? But you don't drink it. You keep it in your mouth. And when the hiccup is about to come, like you keep yourself, like you keep your neck up like this. So it's, so it's easy for the water to pass through. I don't know why. This is like some life hack. It probably, it's probably not even based in science, but it works, all right. It gives you results. <laughs> you get the water in your mouth, and when the hiccup is about to come, swallow all the water in one and go, and it just resets your entire throat. No more hiccups. Easy.
No wake ups. No, I'm gonna wait five seconds. No wake ups. So I just told you how to be hiccups forever. Fuck hiccups. Smoke at that hiccup pack. Find one thing if you're a young individual and you're confused. And young, you can go, wait, 18 is still young. 20 is still young. 25 is still young. However, you gotta get your shit together. Because there's people out there that are 25 who have their shit together in total. Like, every. How do I say this? In all aspects of life. And they're living a much better life than you. And you should be angry. You should be jealous. You should be envious. You should have these negative emotions. In The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene, he says, as a society, as a modern uh, thing, what modern day society, some shit like that, we like to mask our emotions in order to appeal to a mass amount of people. When the emotions we feel are still the same negative emotions as a thousand years ago, we still feel the same emotions. We still feel horny. We still feel down bad. We still feel sad, depressed, lonely, anxious. De how do I? How do I say this? What's under the next emotion? Anxious, pain. We still feel the same emotions. Emotional pain, trauma. We still feel the same emotions. We still feel that moment where one time when our parents uh, think compared us to another kid and they were genuinely disappointed to us and we wanted to genuinely be a uh, thing, a child that we could be proud of. We all feel that. We all feel that, all right? But what we do with those emotions are the most important part. Are we stoic? Are we control those? Or do, do we control those emotions and, and push them towards something positive? Like horny. Like, that, like down bad. Do you... You get horny and then immediately jerk off and then feel like uh, lethargic and lazy and like a bullshit or, and like an asshole the entire day. Or do you feel horny but you still do your work? That sexual energy you use for your work instead of bullshit like what? Video games. More porn. Grant Cardone said, the, said it the best in like the Grant Cardone Patrick Beck David video in the one hour um, thing collaboration video, which is amazing by the way. You should watch it. I'm not going to link it. I don't care. You guys can find it yourself. I'm not doing it for money. Some real big thick energy over there, Jimmy. Chill out, mate. Chill out, mate. You're four incher, Asian four incher. Look at my calluses. Anyways, he says, Lay off the porn, lay off the strip joints. Porn makes you lazy. You jerk off, what the fuck? You allow yourself to be like, you allow yourself to be mediocre. What the fuck? Bullshit, man. Find one thing that you really, really like, your passion. That pays, that pays, that pays the bills, that can potentially pay the bills, it pays you. If you like it somewhat, or you have a passion for it, alright, and then it pays the bills as well, you're going to end up liking it much more, alright, because results fuel motivation. And after a while you get used to it, because humans are uh, creatures of habit, not necessarily creatures of habit, but people, creatures that get used to shit easily, fine. But it, it pays the fucking bills, and you liked it, you said I liked it in the beginning. I quite, I convinced myself I didn't like video editing, because my other friends didn't like video editing. Can you fucking believe it? I liked video editing. I genuinely liked it. And I'm, and I, I'm saying to myself, I like it again. As no form of brainwashing. And it is kind of like brainwashing. But it is true. I liked video editing. I liked the process of sitting down and analyzing content. Making clips and posting them online. I liked it. For the longest time, my friends were like, Oh, I hate video editing. I don't like creating content. My other friend was like, Oh, it takes too much time. I don't like it. And then suddenly, before I knew it, I said I didn't like it. And I made me fucking stop. I fell into complacency because I was a round complacent idiot. A message. Do not surround yourself with complacent idiots. Those big three messages. You're gonna die someday. Morbid, I know, but you're gonna understand the truth. Find one thing to work on, something that you uh, think that pays, makes a bit of money, provides value to the market. And a patch project. And thirdly, don't surround yourself with people that are complacent. Sorry, no, my brain is getting right at the moment. It's 4 a.m. I'm recording videos. But this is like, I'm feeling the creative juices, you know. Sayonara, I'll just catch you in the next video.